Hello, hello, and welcome to this week's video. It is event makeup, specifically wedding or some special occasion where you feel like you've got to get dolled up a little bit more than usual and you're wondering what kind of makeup techniques apply. A lot of you requested this video because if you follow me on social media, and I certainly hope you do, this is where you'll find me below, you'll know that my eldest bonus son got married a couple of weeks ago and so there were a lot of parties and events surrounding the wedding and I chose to wear really bright colors and bright lipstick shades and a lot of you requested a tutorial on that look. Thank you for doing that. Just goes to show I pay attention to what you ask for. Also subscribe to this channel and share me with the women in your life. Don't keep me a secret. Let me out of the box. Okay so makeup for a wedding or a special event. As you know wedding parties generally are in muted colors. Blush, beige, soft greens and things like that. So I enjoy wearing brighter colors at a wedding. It just makes you stand out in photography. And trust me, you're gonna be photographed a lot, especially if you're friendly or related to the wedding party. I really like bright colors for summer. I really like a bold lip for summer. I think it resonates, and I think it's a way to differentiate yourself from the rest of the crowd. Let me state this, if you are in a wedding, chances are you'll have makeup done for you or you'll be given parameters. Nine out of 10 times, the wedding party is always in a very neutral, muted look when it comes to blush and lip, maybe a little bit more of a bold or a smoky eye. So if you opt to go with a more neutral shade, that's gonna be the look that you go for. In this particular case, since I'm wearing sort of a magenta colored dress, I'm really gonna pop the lip, put some color on the eye, but not too much, and I'll show you how it looks photographed as well so you can see the importance of color in a photograph. So let's begin. I'm going to push in and we will start this tutorial. And let me just also say, as you know, I was gone for a week in Maine with my family, had the most glorious time in nature and outdoors, and I loved it. And I barely wore any makeup except for tinted moisturizer, and it was such a nice break. But can I just say that the girly girl in me was kind of missing all of this. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> okay, let's start. I am going to start off with a primer. This one is by Milk Hydro Grip Primer Base. Provides a little bit of hydration, but a real intense grip. And that is incredibly important when we're applying makeup that needs to last throughout the night, dancing, a little bit of sweating, and a lot of flash photography. But the last time I was at Sephora, the gal who helps me there highly recommended this one and I've used it and I love it. I can't really say enough great stuff about it because it helped to keep my makeup smudge free throughout the duration of the wedding. I'm gonna let that dry. The next thing that will follow is of course a foundation that has to have the lasting and staying power for a night like that. I'm going with YSL All Hours Foundation. This one offers up to 24 hours of wear. Granted, I don't think I've ever worn foundation for 24 hours, but if I ever needed to, I think the YSL would be it. It's going to look a little bit lighter on my skin as I apply it, only because I've been out in the sun and the elements for the past week. Won't be a perfect match, but I do have bronzers and powders to darken a little bit as we move on. You can apply your foundation with your fingers a brush or a beauty blender, whatever you prefer. I always dust a little bit, almost like the leftover, on my lips. A great foundation for the lipstick that's to come. Of course, continue on. South, little trick if you have short hair, don't forget behind your neck, down your chest. And if you're gonna wear your hair back off your face, hit your earlobes again with just the remainder. You don't want super red ears and a different colored face. If there are areas that need a little extra foundation, I like to hit that with my finger, especially the upper cheek area, where I can sometimes get a little rosacea or redness and I might want some extra coverage there. Next on the list is eyelid primer. You can either use a primer specifically designed for the eyelid or you can use a concealer. And I like to do that sometimes just to give it an even wash of color. So in this case, I'm going to use my NARS concealer. 
As always, every product will be listed in the description portion below. If you have any eyelash extensions, hold them down as you're applying concealer because you don't want to get anything on your lid onto the extensions. And if you have extra long eyelashes, then lucky you. <laughs> I don't. These are actually baby extensions for a natural look. It almost looks like I have no extensions whatsoever. I'm going to have to do a little bit of a trick later with these. Okay, it's eyebrow time. Tried and true. Anastasia Beverly Hills in Caramel. It's really more of a brownish color. It has a little bit of an auburn pigmentation, but not much. You know, sometimes uh, because I change my hair color so often, I'll use this as my eyebrow base, and then I can actually apply a shadow on top of it and alter. So if I need to add a little bit of a red pigmentation, I can do that through a shadow or more of a deeper brown. But I always find no matter my color, this is a really good eyebrow base for me. As you know, these brows are microbladed. I have a series of videos on that if you're interested in seeing the microblading process and how it's completely changed my eyebrow life <laughs> because I now have them. Like you, as a product of the 90s, they were severely over tweezed and never came back. So now I have this really nice framework to follow. It's very helpful when I do a full face of makeup because you still, even with the microblading, chances are you're going to need to fill in a little bit because the rest of the makeup look is going to be so strong. It would look odd without a bolder brow. And for facelifting techniques, please feel free to visit my makeup facelift video as well. That'll show you sort of the methodology but behind how I apply my brows, my eyes, and all of that. All right. I am using an eyeshadow palette that I have featured. I think I've lost count. It is the Sephora Pro palette, the most incredible edible shades. <laughs> I think they're fantastic, and I always find something in this palette to go with anything, whether it's dress up or dress down. I am going to start with this really cool pink color that you see here in the middle and put that on my lid. It's got a little bit of a sparkle to it. You know, I only like to put iridescent right here on the top of the lid. I'm gonna go in with a smaller, flat, firm brush. Again, you may need to hold your eyelashes down for this and just hit it right on the top of the lid. I carry it up high to open up the eye. Just focusing on the center part, we're gonna use other colors out here on the outer third. The same for the other eye. So next I'm gonna block it in. These will be my last two colors, this brown and this black. So we'll go in with the darker brown, outer third, I always go lightly. You can add more as needed. It's just harder to take off. And again, the eyes, even though colorful, they're not going to be the main focal point in this makeup look. I know you're shocked. <laughs> okay, with a very thin brush and now the black shadow. I'm going to go in and just hug right along my lash line and just wisp out a little bit. like so. Again, primarily the outer third of the eye and going up. If you need to just give it a little yank, albeit a gentle one, go for it. I prefer using a shadow to draw out the wing as opposed to the liquid liner wing. I think that's a great look on our teenagers and 20-somethings can be a little harsh on us mature ladies. So sometimes the softer shadows blended in that area can be as effective, if not better for us. Now I'm going to use a eyeliner by Wonder 2 Super Stay Liner. 
and this is your choice. It, it really depends on what you feel comfortable with. I go from underneath and you can use a black, a really dark brown. It's up to you. I am going to add a lash strip to this. I would normally use black, except I can't find it. <laughs> so it might have gotten lost in Maine somewhere. Don't ask me why on earth I brought it, but it is what it is. That truly would be the ideal shade here. But again, this is dark enough. And you can give it a, a light little flick in this outer corner going up. Again, that just sort of matches what you did with the black shadow. At this point, I'm just using a blending brush that has no color, and I'm just going to whisk what I've done and carry it just a little bit farther up toward the eyebrow. Just softens it again. No harsh lines. I will now use as a brow highlight to run underneath the eyebrow with a flat type of a brush. Again, we're just hugging right here under the brow just to make it pop a little bit. And then the color right below has some iridescence to it. I'm going to use that just on the inner corner because it plays well with the iridescence right here on the lid with the pink. Not much, just a little bit. Light color on the inner corner gives some width to the eye. The dark, again, carries that out. My eyes are a little bit more close set, so I need this makeup technique to help give me some width to my eyes. And this is also the point where I assess and figure out the brow. I think I'm going to add a little bit of a pop to it. And see, here's what's interesting. If you look here on the bottom, there's kind of this reddish brown. I'm going to use that as a bit of an overlay to the brow pomade that I've used already. Just a tiny amount giving it just a little bit more power and a little bit more depth. Also creates sort of an ombre effect on the brow too, using two different colors. And it's best not to fill the whole thing because that makes it look more like a real eyebrow, having some areas that are a little bit more sparse than others. At this point, it's gonna get interesting <laughs> because you're really not supposed to do this. Put magnetic lashes on top of lash extensions, but in this case, these lash extensions are so minimal. I need that extra pop. These are Kiss Magnetic Lashes and they've all fallen down, kind of like Humpty Dumpty. Um, Ardell Double Demi Wispies is what they're called. And uh, to me, they're the perfect length because they're not too crazy. I have done a tutorial on magnetic lashes, so if you struggle or haven't tried, please go visit that tutorial. It's really, really simple once you get it down. I, I know there can be a learning curve, but I'm telling you, once you master it, it's, it's the best thing since sliced bread. Now, doing it on top of these extensions will mean that when I remove, you normally would just kind of pinch them and slide them off. I will have to kind of peel and separate so that I don't lose any of my extensions. But same principle applies. I'm gonna go in and start with my right, place this one on top, and then I'm going to take its mate, mate, and go underneath, hold it down, and then they meet up and become friends. Sometimes you gotta play with it to get it in the right position, um, but do, it, do what you gotta do. It'll be worth your while. Okay, magnetics are on. This is plenty good of an eye look. There's, an, there's more than enough going on here. Now it's concealer time, and I start with a color corrector. So this one is by NARS, Radiant Creamy Color Corrector in light and you'll see the peachy tone that it has. That helps to counteract any blue and purple discoloration if you have. I usually do in the inner corner and just a little bit out here to the side. I color correct first and then apply the concealer after. You just gently pat it in. It's creamy, but it does dry pretty quickly so that you can move on to your concealer. But you see how it immediately took care of the bluish tones underneath my eyes? I mean, you could almost just leave it at this. But I want to go just a hair lighter for the concealer. 
I believe it says shade Canel. I'll double check again in the description portion for you. I don't trust my eyes. Oh, I just tap where I feel I need it. Again, less is more. You can always add, always build. I'll provide a link to my most recent concealer video as well to really help camouflage under eye circles and bags. There's a special technique if you deal with those. And there are days when I definitely do, especially early in the morning. I hate really putting on makeup right when I get up because I feel like my face, I'm like a blowfish. <laughs> so it's like no matter what I do, it's not helping. But there's something about just the time passing throughout the day. Suddenly I feel like my face settles in and starts to look like itself. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's set it. And my product du jour is by Pat McGrath Labs. It's called Light Skin Fresh Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder. I know it looks scary white, but trust me, it does not go on scary white, but it will perfectly set the under eye powder that you have applied, will not settle into the lines. I know a lot of you ask me about that. This one is magic and a little goes a long way. All we're doing is setting it and preventing it from shining. Okay, and so now that that's done, I will also set my foundation with what I've used, I think, ever since I started this channel back in 2014. Laura Mercier, the Translucent Loose. I absolutely love this product. Sets any foundation beautifully. So again, I'm just gonna carry it down my neck and anywhere else I've applied my foundation. Okay, let's have a little color and contour, shall we? For that, it's a NARS product. It's Iconic Glow Cheek Duo. Laguna is the bronzing powder and Orgasm is their signature blush color. These two in tandem will work really well together. I will go in with a contour brush into my bronzer. I'm gonna hit it just under my cheekbone. Not going too low nor too far down. It is a bronzer. So you want some of it getting up closer to your cheek area. And also since it's summertime and we're talking about summer weddings, you definitely want to get some warmth into your skin color. I carry the bronzer up on the sides of my face, forehead area, basically where the sun would warm you, right? And then it works as a great contour as well. Just don't forget to bring it down. You can contour your nose a little bit if you want. Just wherever you feel the need. I am bronzed. Now it's time to get that really pretty glow from this color orgasm. And that's gonna rest nice up high on the cheek area. Has a little, little bit of iridescence to it, kind of a golden glow which I like and plays off really nicely on the eyeshadow color on my lid. Again, when you place your blush up high, shockingly, it enhances your cheekbones and it creates quite a lift in your face. So that's done and I feel like everything is beginning to talk now. Let's go on to the lips and this is where we're gonna get a little bold and crazy, but as you know, that's how I like to roll on this channel, no fear. I also have a tendency to mix colors and I will have to do that in this particular case because I don't have the exact shade of this dress, but sometimes you can find two shades when blended together can be perfections. I'm going to use the Wonder line for that. I have two lipsticks and again, one is a little bit of a bluish pinky red, the other is a bit of an orangey red, but when they come together, they just somehow, they work for me. So let's start off with a lip liner. When I do a bold color like that, I want my lip liner to be about as close to the lipstick as possible. When you wear a bold lip, the last thing that you wanna see is an actual lip liner 
outside of it. It looks clownish. Really be mindful of that. Try to find a liner that's the exact same shade as the lip color and then that it will all blend together. This one is by Wonder 2. It's must have matte lip liner in Gimme Red. Also, take your time when you apply a darker liner because if it messes up, it can be a little tricky to clean up. Okay, I am pretty well blocked in. When I apply dark lipsticks, I absolutely positively must use a lip brush because you just need it for that precision. Otherwise, there's too, too much of a risk of it just going everywhere. Again, take your time. This is probably the most time consuming part aside from the eyes. My bad, I'm halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> that looks ridiculous. And I didn't even tell you the name of this color. Um, also, Gimme Red. It's basically the same color as the lip liner that I just applied. And just be careful not to overdraw too much with a bold lip because it again will be noticeable. You can subtly. So now I'm going to go in with the next color and just warm it up a smidge What's the name of this one? Oh, Crush for Coral. It has just a little bit of a orangey pinky warmth to it. And it's all that I need to just lighten it a little bit and brighten it. But again, it's crazy. Sometimes layering lipsticks can be magic. I really like a matte lipstick for an event for a couple of reasons, eating and drinking. And especially if you go this bold with a lipstick, if it's too glossy, it's just gonna start smudging and going everywhere. Matte to me is great. You can always add a little iridescence in the form of an eyeshadow, actually. You could take an iridescent pink eyeshadow, rub your finger in it, just kind of smudge it a little bit. But I would stay away as best as you can from the lip glosses, just because you don't want the precision of this type of a lipstick to start moving and traveling. So let me take the you know, little five-year-old clip out of my hair, back up. Okay, so now you see it all pulled together and I think it sort of makes sense with the outfit that I'm wearing and the color. And by the way, the added bonus of putting on your makeup with either a Velcro roller or a little banana clip is that it can help to give you some extra height if you're looking for that at the front of your hair. So don't forget about that opportunity to give your hair a boost while you're putting on your makeup. But I hope you found this to be a helpful video for you. It was requested based on makeup looks that I wore. And if you like it, please give me the thumbs up and please don't forget to share this video with a friend or a loved one who you think might benefit from this tutorial. I greatly appreciate you doing that. Go out, have fun in your bathroom and putting yourself together. Be bold, be blessed, knock them dead at the wedding or wherever you're going. And I'll see you next Thursday at one o'clock. Bye-bye.